Up next on Connections, we'll report on a sign of the times, new CTA signs that convey helpful information to riders. You'll meet a bus servicer who has seen it all and is now taking top honors. How much money can you save by using mass transit? The numbers may just surprise you. How the CTA is handling this brutal winter and a look at some new bus tracker routes and additional express bus service. The CTA, working hard to improve, committed to quality and its riders. Welcome to Connections. The CTA, delivering quality, affordable transit that links people, jobs, and communities. I'm Jean Sparrow. Welcome to Connections. There was a lot of excitement in the air when Mayor Daley recently showed off the new next train signs at the 47th Street Red Line Station. Today we're here to announce the installation of the first digital advertising displays along the CTA rail system. This project will make it possible to provide next train arrival information, notify customers of service changes, and expect it to bring more than $100 million in revenue over the 10-year life of the contract with Titan Outdoor. So on these screens, they'll tell them when the next train is coming. We can tell them about changes in service. If there's any sort of emergency situation, they can be reprogrammed so that our control center, the Office of Emergency Management, and the police department can all use those signs to talk to customers. Customers will receive a significant amount of information, all designed to make travel more efficient and easier to plan. So there are eight screens here at 47th Street. There's one screen that's out uh, at street level, and that sign provides information both about bus arrivals and about train arrivals and also has advertising. There's one screen in the unpaid area so that people can get information before they go into the, into the paid area here. Uh, that just shows train arrival information and other CTA messages. And then there are six screens down on the platform level, each of them facing the way that the train is coming. The signs, including the ones at stations and the ones on buses, are made possible by advertising. The best part is the whole program comes at no cost to CTA. This program really has a second dimension to it, which is the ability for us to attract advertisers to a state-of-the-art advertising medium that has never really been installed anywhere in North America at this level. And essentially, our advertisers, through our sales agent, Titan Advertising, together are funding the cost of the development and the installation of this program. So it's a major technology investment and a major installation investment. The main benefit to customers is a, you know, a fully integrated communications network, giving next train information, giving communications. Uh, it came at no cost to the CTA. It's an $18 million investment from our partner, Titan Worldwide. Traditional outdoor advertising is really static in nature. It goes up for a month and it just stays there. We have the ability with this platform to change advertising messages as many times as we want during the course of the day as long as we plan for it ahead of time. A restaurant might want to advertise at different times of the day different items of their menu, so we would give them the ability to advertise breakfast in the morning, lunch in the afternoon, or dinner in the evening. Or another interesting idea would be for a television network to be promoting shows that are going to be airing that night on their particular station. We're using these new signs because they give us a way to communicate with our customers. CTA's communications efforts will continue to expand as more and more signs will be added to a station near you. Every month we show you some of CTA's best employees. This month we feature a bus servicer who has a long history with the CTA. Why is the bus servicer such a critical position? The bus servicers, their, their job here, as buses come in in the evening, they drive them to the pumps. They uh, fuel them, they sweep them, they check all the fluids, make sure the oil and antifreeze are off the park. My friend some years ago and had had about a year uh, with this company and just suggested me coming to CTA upon my graduation from high school. 
And then I, uh, I did apply and I was hired in August of 1969. And I came right out of high school and I've been here ever since. So this year, in uh, 2009, I will have my 40th year. A lot has happened in the last 40 years and Bob's dedication to CTA has remained strong. My day consists of setting up our complete inspection. I go out and get the buses. I do interior looking for graffiti. If something is very dirty, I'll take care of that. If I see something that's an obvious problem, I mean, I will let my manager know, and then, uh, then we deal with that accordingly. When they find a defect wrong with a the bus, they put a defect ticket. They write up a ticket. That's what their function is, so we could keep a good service out there without breaking down. They're a big, crucial part of our business here because for them, we wouldn't have service out there. Clean, reliable, and safe. This was the second year of the bus servicer category in the CTA Rodeo. The annual rodeo is a friendly skills competition that allows employees to demonstrate excellence in their jobs. Bob is one of an elite group that was eligible to compete. The employees that, are, that had options to had a chance to go to the rodeo is the employees that have two years, no accidents. They have to have a perfect attendance. So it's only a few, it's the CTA best services that's eligible to uh, even participate in this competition. I've been in this rodeo on and off since 1986, uh, actually when it first started. I was in it when we used to have competitions with the three-man team, but now they started up a new position for bus servicer, and I started on that and I won it last year, and obviously I won it this year, and it's just something that I like to do. I mean, I like the competition, it's, it's fun, and uh, it's just a good day out. Bus servicers have to perform a variety of tasks at the rodeo. This year, the weather didn't cooperate, but that didn't stop Bob from taking top honors again. Uh, there was 10, uh, they call them problems, driving problems, left turns, right turns, that, and then they had a written test. Uh, it tells you things about Chicago and learning how to even use a map to get from point A to point B. And then also there are defects on the bus. It could be a flat tire, it could be a broken window, uh, looking for anything hazardous in, in the bus itself. And returning champion from last year, Bob Case. Bob is a uh, he's very good employee, outstanding. He plays a big part in, and he's like ears and eyes, and he, he's very good. I, it's uh, it's very hard to replace him. And, and with 40 years of seniority, it's very hard, you know. And he knows his job very well. No matter what I do or any servicer does, it's always preparing the bus for service for that day. We always try to maintain the best service. Bob is one of the many bus servicers who put clean and well-maintained buses on the street for customers every day. Congratulations, Bob. Thanks, Bob, for the great job you do every day. People are really discovering a savings by using public transit, and now it's easier than ever to calculate those numbers. A recent study by the American Public Transportation Association, or APTA, has shown a huge savings for public transit riders. According to APTA's Transit Savings Report, you can achieve an average annual savings of $8,368 per year by taking public transportation instead of driving. My work transferred downtown, so in the loop. Instead of driving and parking downtown every day, I decided to start taking CTA. Stephanie has been riding CTA regularly since August 2007. She's learned firsthand what a difference public transportation has made in her checking account. It was a huge advantage that I was able to take the CTA because then I didn't have to fill up my car every week. I could go every three weeks without having to put gas in my car. It saves me a lot of money, it's faster, and I don't have the frustration of traffic. APTA's monthly transit savings report shows how much you can save on a monthly or yearly basis by taking public transportation, even if you still own a car for occasional use. You can go to publictransportation.org to find the transit savings calculator and see what you can save using CTA. You'll put in numbers such as your car's gas mileage, price of gas, 
miles in your commute, size of your car, parking costs, and the cost for your CTA commute. In just a few minutes, you can see what you save by taking public transit. I got rid of my car after riding CTA for about nine months. Last summer, I just, my lease was up on my car and I didn't have to get another one. So I don't have a car payment. I don't have to worry about car insurance anymore. And don't forget, the Transit Benefit Program is a convenient way to save even more by paying public transit costs with pre-tax earnings. My work has the payment plan so I can get my CTA card tax deferred. So I decided to pay taxes on the money for my writing. Employees at participating companies have money taken out of their paycheck pre-tax and used to pay for travel on public transit, which lowers their taxable income. A rider using the maximum transit benefit allowance of $115 would save over $500 a year in taxes. This can be especially important for a family who's trying to stretch their dollars. Absolutely, absolutely use the CTA. Saves you time, saves you money. Visit publictransportation.org to evaluate your savings. You might be surprised at what you find. Just ahead on Connections, important improvements to emergency exits. So we're asking people, what is your best CTA experience? My best CTA experience, it's got to be every day because I commute from my house to downtown all the time. And it doesn't take me long. We had to go on a field trip all the way to the north side on the red line. And we got lost because it was at night. <laughs> I left my house at 11.40. And what time is it now? I'm already here. We asked one of the CTA personnel, I'm like, okay, they told us we had to go to a movie theater and it's around this stop, where can we go? And then he's like, oh, well, there's one on that way and then there's another one that way. He's like, but I think your best stop point is this way. And it was the movie theater that we were supposed to go to. The Green Line, it comes and goes, I mean, within a matter of minutes, and the timing is perfect. And when you call CTA Tracker, oh, wow. I mean, the service is just phenomenal. On an average weekday, the CTA provides 1.7 million rides, getting people where they need to go around Chicago and the 40 surrounding suburbs. If you want to hop aboard, here's how to get all the information you need. Online, go to www.transitchicago.com. There you can access system maps, bus and train schedules, and service updates. You can even use the Google Trip Planner. Enter where you want to start, where you want to go, and what time you plan to travel. For regional trips, you can use the RTA Trip Planner. Another option, make the connection by phone. Call 836-7000 from any local area code. Connection, a link or a spark that brings people together. I'm Jean Sparrow. Welcome to Connections. Traveling without incident is what the CTA wants your trip to be. But in the event an emergency does occur, recent improvements to the subway exits will help riders to identify their location and get to street level. Recently, several upgrades were made to subway emergency exits. Exits are now brighter and easier to navigate in the event of an emergency. What we've done is we've put in higher output, better efficient lighting. We're able to double the output of the lighting without increasing the power requirements. In the event of a power outage and the lights go out, we also have battery backup lighting that will allow passengers to see their way through the exits in the event of an emergency. Those batteries have a lifespan of approximately 90 minutes. In the event that passengers still need to use the exits after the 90 minutes, we have this green glow in the dark paint that absorbs the light from the lights on a constant basis and have a lifespan of up to 12 hours of glow after the last light is extinguished. The new white walls and glow in the dark paint on the walls, handrails and stairs will help riders during an evacuation. Many other improvements to the emergency exits were made over the last few months, including upgrades to lighting, new hardware on doors, stair replacements, and new signage. One of the additional upgrades that we've done in the exits is the signage that we've placed. We've put them in the, the walkways from the track level into the exit. We've also put them 
in the exits themselves, which tell the passengers where they are as far as the street location and the number of flights that they have to walk from track level up to street level. In the event of an emergency evacuation, an easy to follow path that helps get riders to the surface without hesitation is important. The final piece that we did is we did improvements to the emergency hatches themselves. What we've done up there is we've made repairs, we've replaced the hatches as needed. In addition, what we've done on the push hardware to get access to the street level, we've put a sticker that instructs the passengers how to use the emergency hatch in the event of an emergency. If customers want more information about emergency evacuations, the CTA website is a great place to start. On the CTA's website, we have an emergency evacuation video that details some of these items that I've talked about, in addition to more procedures in the event that an emergency does occur in the subway. I think this gives customers a much more safe feeling to be riding our system. They have much better communication with, with the CTA. They understand where they're at in the event of an emergency. They also know how far they have to travel, where they're at. It's cleaner, brighter, and safer in the event that they need to use these exits. Chances are you'll never have to put these improvements to use, but they are there if needed. Customer communication keeps on improving with the addition of more bus tracker routes. Bus tracker allows our customers to go to a website via a PDA or computer and it will tell them the estimated arrival times of a bus at their location. We've been keeping you informed about the progress of bus tracker. Riders are finding it extremely useful, particularly in the cold weather. And at the end of January, 11 more routes were activated for a total of 86 out of 153 routes. New routes added are number 3 King Drive, number X3 King Drive Express, number 4 Cottage Grove, number X4 Cottage Grove Express, number 22 Clark, number 36 Broadway, number 49B Northwestern, Number 82, Kimball Homan. Number 93, California Dodge. Number 96, Lunt. Number 97, Skokie. 24 additional routes will be added to Bus Tracker in March. Bus Tracker is helpful, especially in the winter time, because our customers don't have to sit at the bus stop and wait for the bus to arrive. They can actually look on their computer or on their PDA and it will tell them the estimated time that the bus is going to arrive at their bus stop. It has to be either their desktop PC or a web-enabled device that um, allows them to access the internet. Supervisors continually monitor bus routes throughout the city. With new routes continually added, more and more customers are counting on Bus Tracker to plan their travel for the day. Right now, uh, our website logs about 15% of the users go to the website via a wireless device. And so our website right now tracks on average 20,000 hits per weekday. But as we release more routes, our customers are becoming more familiar with Bus Tracker and the knowledge that it provides them with. As always, Bus Tracker is easy to find with your web enabled device. Our customers can go to transitchicago.com to access CTA Bus Tracker, or they can access it via ctabustracker.com. Check Bus Tracker before you leave so you're not standing out here in the cold. Winter has hit hard in Chicago this year, but CTA does whatever it takes to keep buses and trains running, even during bad winter weather. Scraping. Salting. Sanding. Blowing. And plowing. At the end of the day, we all know we have the same mission, and that mission is to keep buses and trains running. So whatever that does take, whether it's my staff or a combination of staffs, whether it's from bus, whether it's from rail, whether it's from facilities, it's irrelevant. On the bus end, the CTA focuses on removing snow and ice from bus garages and pedestrian walkways within turnarounds. On the rail side, employees clear ice and snow from platforms and then spread sand to provide traction. The reason we don't use salt is that salt combined with water is conductive and you have a third rail and that's 600 volts of electricity. That 600 volts of electricity is no match for ice, however. If the third rail ices up, electricity can't reach the train. So our biggest fight is to make sure we keep that ice off the rail and the 
The biggest component that keeps that off is the sleep blades. Every train in the fleet will have sleep blades on the number one end put on. So that, let's say, all of a sudden a storm blows through, that operator can get down, put the sleep blades down, and that train starts to scrape off the ice immediately. There's also a system to spread a de-icing solution along the third rail. These containers are filled with a paste that's pumped to a distribution hose on the train's trolley shoe. The trolley shoe is the part of the train that makes the connection with the third rail. The sooner we get the de-icer paste on the third rail, the more effective the whole system works. Lead cars are also equipped with front end plows to move snow aside. But when the really big storm hits, the CTA brings out its double locomotive diesels to bully their way through the snow. Prepping for winter begins in September. The action plan goes into effect when the first flakes fall. I think for me, when in doubt, get out there. So you know what? When I find out that there's snow, I get my staff out there early. The big thing is having individuals who've been through this before. I mean, I think what CTA is very lucky is, is that we have a lot of individuals who stay with this company a long time, and so they've been through it already. So their experience and their knowledge and, and their relationships with the other agencies help us to make sure that we're going to have clean, safe stations and safe streets. CTA crews work around the clock to deal with the extreme cold and snow to keep service running, and they will continue to do so. Up next, expressly for customers. Miss an episode of Connections? Need to find an address or a link featured? Just go to the Connections website. There's several ways to find us. Go to www.transitchicago.com and click on Connections. Or visit the Connections website at podcastchicago.tv and click the Connections link to find the most recent episodes. You can watch episodes online for instant viewing. Or you can subscribe with your favorite podcasting tool and automatically download new shows each month. Like all video podcasts, connections can be viewed directly on your computer or laptop or can be viewed on a portable media player such as the video iPod. Connect online with connections at podcastchicago.tv. Getting from here to there, quickly, easily, and without breaking the bank. I'm Jean Sparrow. Welcome to Connections. If you've ever ridden an express bus, you know how much time it can save you on your commute. CTA is counting on increased service on express routes to make traveling more efficient for customers. We have two different kinds of express bus routes. We have the traditional kind of express bus routes that people think about on Lakeshore Drive or an expressway, but we also have the neighborhood express bus routes, which are limited stops, stopping every half mile or so. Bus only stops at X route stops, so it's typically every half mile. In some places, it would go into a more frequent stop pattern in a major destination. If you are on an express bus and you want to get off at a local stop, you'll get off at the next express stop because it won't be stopping at the local stops. Recently, the Chicago Transit Board approved experimental service enhancements along three express bus routes to improve the overall efficiency of the routes. This pilot program and experiment is three bus routes, three corridors. So it is the Western Corridor where we have the 49 and the X49 service. It's the Garfield Corridor where we have the 55 and the X55 services. And the Irving Park Road Corridor where we have the 80 and the X80 service. Enhanced express service on the X49, X55, and X80 will begin on March 23rd. The advantage to customers is for people riding an express bus service, they will stop typically every half mile instead of stopping every one to two blocks. And by doing that, the trip is going to be greatly sped up. CTA is working with the Massachusetts Institute of Technology to better understand the advantages of express service. 
We've been in collaboration with MIT for about three years, and MIT has studied express routes across the country, and their re research shows that going to a ratio of about two to one express to local is a much more effective way to operate the express services in a corridor. What we've found in our experience of local and express services is by not going to a high enough frequency of express to local service, we have the problem of people just waiting for the first bus to show up. And we want to encourage people to make that switch to riding the express service. Right now, the current ratio is about 60% local buses and 30% express buses. With a change in that ratio comes a big change in service. And we want to change that, basically flip it, so that it's 60 to 65, 66% express, and the rest would be local. So we want to go to a model of two-thirds express, one-third local. Just by having the increased frequency of express to local, we will take out many of the conflicts in terms of local bus and express bus showing up at the same time. The higher level of service that's there will encourage people to make the express route choice. Working together, MIT and CTA have come up with the best solution for moving customers efficiently. In quarters where we have implemented express service in addition to local service, we've experienced a 16% increase in ridership in those corridors. It's been highly effective. Five of our top 10 routes have express services in those corridors. And what we're hoping for is to really being able to move customers more quickly down the street on express services as compared to the local services. Keep an eye out for enhanced express routes this spring. A few months ago, we unveiled an exciting new program with iGo. Now, the program is up and running. There's now one card that's a combined iGo card and Chicago Card Plus. The shared Chicago Card Plus iGo cards offer the same account features as a standard Chicago Card Plus. iGo is a car sharing service. We make cars available on an hourly basis to our members. We are located in 32 neighborhoods around Chicago and also in Oak Park and Evanston. And an iGo member has access to the cars on an hourly basis and we pay for the gas, we pay for the insurance, we maintain the cars, and we have all low emission vehicles. A third of our fleet, almost half our fleet, are hybrid cars. Nearly every car in iGo's fleet is within walking distance of a CTA rail or bus stop. In addition, the CTA offers shared car parking around many L stations and looks forward to expanding the number of cars and locations this year. Good for the environment and good for transit users. iGo contributes to the use of public transportation in Chicago. But what I guess characterizes all the people who use iGo is that they're really smart about how they handle their transportation and they're people who want to save some money as well. It's great to use transit for your daily commute to go back and forth to work. You'll use the Chicago Card Plus part of the card, um, but then maybe after work, you know, you want to go do some errands or go to the grocery store, and it would work a lot better for you to have a car. This program is part of CTA's effort to improve on the convenience of public transit for customers. CTA's and iGo's websites include all of the information you need to get moving. Visit TransitChicago.com or iGoCars.org for more information. We're always looking for story ideas. Do you have a travel tip you'd like to share or a CTA story you'd like to tell? We want to hear about it. Give us a call at the Connections Hotline, 312-681-2812. Helping you make your connections, I'm Jean Sparrow. Thank you for watching.